One of the things we've looked at in Blender is using the extrude tool. So we've looked at putting a plane into a scene um, and then coming over to edit mode, tools, extrude, and then extrude region. And then we've pulled the plane up to make a, a box or, or cube, whatever you want to call it. And we can do this with other shapes. You don't have to use a square, but we need to get them into Blender. Um, now, what we could do is if you were so inclined, um, back into object mode to delete it. Delete. Now, if we were so inclined, we could go to create and we could use some of these things like Bezier curves um, and we could draw stuff like that. We could try and draw a path um, if we wanted to. Um, a bit of mucking about it's easier to draw these in another program and bring them in to blender so i'll just delete that so we've got a clear scene for when we come back later so starting over we need to get the shaping that we want to make in blender now if you know how to use a vector based drawing program which would be adobe illustrator as the industry standard or if you've not there's a very good free one um called Inkscape, which you can download for Mac or PC. Um, and this lets you draw in vector graphics. Not going to go into vector graphic tutorials here, apart from to quickly explain what they are. Um, we all know that if we take a picture on our cameras, on our phones, it's made up of loads of little dots. And obviously, if we enlarge the images up, we can see the dots. Uh, vectors work differently. Vectors are a mathematical way of drawing, um, much more of a, of a technical way of working under the hood. Um, if you're in, in Inkscape, if you come over to this tool over here, what we can do is we can, if I click on that tool and I click and click again, you click again, you see every time I click, it draws a line, I double click, and that's the end of the line. Okay. Um, what I can also do is I can, if I choose another one, so if I start again, um i could instead i could click when i click the second one i'm dragging it so instead of just clicking i'm keeping the mouse button pressed as i move it and you can see i've put curves in the line and what that means is if i come back up to here this tool here which if you're in um, illustrator is the white arrow the direct select tool you can move all of these around and change them okay so you can hopefully see how you can draw shapes using these and it's a very professional way of drawing things it's um much less freehand but you get to control stuff with such precision afterwards and um, if you wanted to just quickly before we move on i could apply a shape to my path before i draw it and when i draw it gives it a bit of a swoosh and there's all sorts of effects but anyway we could draw shapes in that if we wanted to so if you know how to use vector graphics use vector graphics um if you don't so if you're more comfortable doing stuff um in vaster programs uh, vaster graphic programs such as uh, photoshop or gimp or any of the other um painting type programs feel free to draw your object in there and I've drawn this basic object in here inside um, Photoshop um, now a few things to point out first of all it's got to when you finish it it's got to be transparent so I've so a need to so couldn't do this for instance in Microsoft paint you need your object to be on a transparent layer okay um, now once you've got the object you can paint anything you want to it so I'm just going to choose a, a brush black brush um, make sure I'm on the right bin these layers that I've accidentally put in um, so I could paint some stuff in there paint some stuff in here so I can change the, ob the object I can paint any object I want as long as it's transparent then, then what I do then is I go file and I um, save as and we'll save this as a PNG file. I've already got a copy, so I'll replace it. Okay, 
and PNG file will save the transparency. Next, we're going to convert that um, raster graphic, so the one made up of all the dots, and we're going to convert it into the vector graphic with all the lines. Loads of ways to do it. You can do it in Adobe Illustrator. You can do it in the free version uh, Inkscape that we looked at. Or you can just come to this website here, Vectorizer.io. And I'm just going to upload an image, um, vector shape PNG, that we just made. I shall open it up. And it doesn't look like it's there. It is. You can just make out the outline because it's made the black transparent as well. But if you come down to the bottom, we can see it a bit more clearly on the output preview. Skip wizard and use these settings. Give it a second. There it is. And then we'll just download that as Blender Shape SVG. Close that down. Close that down. And then we should see that it's here on the desktop as an SVG file. Um, now it may appear. Let me try that again. It may appear with a Internet Explorer or Adobe Edge, um, Microsoft Edge logo or whatever your browser is. That's fine. Um, that's just because SVG is a file used on the web. So what we've got is we've got a vector version of the graphic that we drew in Photoshop. And that means we're good to move back into Blender. OK, so here we are. We're back in Blender. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import that um, SVG file that we've made, whether you made it in Illustrator or whether you converted it through Vectorizer, um, as long as it's SVG. So we go File, Import, SVG, Desktop. There it is, Blender Shape. Import it. <gasps> Where is it? Can't see it. It might be so small that we need to zoom in. And there it is, but we can barely see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select it, come over here, and then scale it up ooh, about 50 times on the X and the Y axes. And then hopefully if I zoom out, we can see it. it's a bit, bit clearer now. So there it is. So what we need to do now is we need to convert this into a shape. This is currently a path. Okay, so what we're going to do is object convert to mesh and curve meta surf text. So that one, so object convert to mesh, and that's now a mesh. So if we go to border select and select everything on there, okay, and if we go to edit mode, so let's just do that again border select. And we can see that we've got this as an object now. Now, one thing we do need to do before we do any of this is to make sure we've got the X-ray mode turned on um, so we can actually see, so we actually select all the vectors and not just the visible ones. So what we need to do is come down to this option here and click on it so it goes light gray. So we'll select, deselect, and select, and select all. And then we should be able to go extrude region. And we should be able to extrude our shape up to whatever shape we want it to be, whatever the shape was. And then we can go out to object mode. And there it is. If you want to see it a bit more clearly, we can come over here and select on the texture mode. You see it's coming as black. So if we just come down here, change this from black to whatever color we want it to be. You can see we've brought a two, the 2D object in and we've converted it to 3D. Um, now you also notice that there's a lot of polygons and vectors in that. So what you can do if you wanted to tidy it up a bit is in edit mode with it selected, come over here, add a modifier and decimate. And let's change the ratio on this one at least to 0.25. So that'll get down to about a quarter of the number of polygons that we've got. So we need to change this back to object mode before we apply it. So 0.25, apply it. And if we come back to edit mode, you can see there's a lot less polygons, but we've not really lost much on that shape. So just a way of making stuff a bit neater when you make stuff 
into a 3D object.